Hello, everyone, and welcome to another short video on our own devices. I'm Jean Messier, and today I wanted to have a quick look at a really neat piece that was recently sent to me by a very generous viewer. Now, the viewer in question has asked to remain anonymous, but if you're out there watching, thank you so very much. Uh, it's just delightful to stumble upon a care package full of fascinating devices like this one just waiting on your doorstep. Anyway, this is a CD717 ion chamber survey meter. This was manufactured by the Victorine Instrument Company of Cleveland, Ohio in 1965, and 100,000 of these units were purchased by the American Office of Civil Defense, or OCD, for monitoring radiation levels following a nuclear attack. Now, this is actually a modified version of the CD715, this guy, which we've already looked at in a previous video on Cold War civil defense equipment. Like the 715, this is an ion chamber survey meter designed to detect gamma radiation only. The ion chamber is encased in this metal housing, meaning that alpha and beta radiation can't penetrate. However, following a nuclear attack in terms of direct external exposure, gamma radiation is going to be your primary concern anyway. So this has a detection range of 0 to 500 röntgens per hour and two controls a zeroing knob, and a mode selector, which has seven positions. Off, circuit check, zero, and then 100 times, 10 times, one time, and 0.1 time detection range scaling positions. Now, the circuit check position is spring-loaded, meaning it springs back to zero when you release it, and what this should do is cause the needle to swing over into this red region on the scale. If it doesn't, it means either the battery is dead or there's some other problem with the circuit whereas the zero setting shorts out the dial, allowing you to reset the needle to zero using the zeroing knob. Now, the dial itself is a ruggedized version with a black plastic bezel, which was introduced as part of an upgrade package to the 715. However, as all of the other upgrades applied to the 715 were integrated into the 717 right from the beginning, you'll find none of them stamped with the big black R for retrofit as on the 715. And finally, if we undo these top latches and remove the top cover, you can see that the circuit is completely transistorized and that the unit runs off of a single D-cell battery. Right, so, so far, so similar to the 715. So what makes this unit special? Well, if we hold them up side by side, you'll see that the 715 has a much deeper lower casing, which is attached by a separate set of latches. And if we undo those latches, we'll see that the bottom casing comes off, and inside we find our ion chamber and a plastic spool holding 25 feet or 7.6 meters of triaxial cable. And what this allows you to do is to connect your ion chamber to the rest of the survey meter remotely. So what this allows you to do is place your ion chamber outside and still take readings from safely inside your follow shelter. And the spool is even specially designed to prop up the dial so that you can more easily read it. So these were designed to be issued on request to designated radiation monitors who were specially trained civil defense volunteers who would be dispatched to public fallout shelters or special facilities known as fixed monitoring stations, fallout monitoring stations, or weapons effects reporting stations, where they would monitor and report outside radiation levels following a nuclear attack. And while there was purpose-built remote reading radiac equipment available, such as the IM-2015 that we looked at in a previous video, this was a lot more convenient since it combined the functions of a handheld and a remote reading radiac meter in one compact package. So just really quite a neat design. Now, one of the potential flaws with this design was that the lower casing and the ion chamber could accumulate fallout particles, meaning that readings could be thrown off and that you'd have to decontaminate the unit. For this reason, the 717 was issued with a plastic anti-contamination bag, which fit over the lower casing, preventing fallout from getting in while providing no barrier at all to gamma rays entering the ion chamber. And while we're at it, the box that this comes in also came with an instruction manual and a shoulder strap, which attaches to these lugs on the front and the back of the unit. So the first mention of the 717 model comes from 1961 when the Bendix Corporation was working on the first prototypes. Then in 1963, the Office of Civil Defense placed an order for 100,000. 
and these remained in inventory until the 1980s when they were surplused onto the civilian market. And since most of these remained in storage that entire time, only being used occasionally for training exercises, most of the examples that you'll find are in near mint condition. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and thanks again to the lovely viewer who sent me this. This will make a fine addition to my ever-growing collection of civil defense gear and other fascinating devices. And if any of you have any neat things lying around that you would love me to cover on this channel, please drop me a line at the email appearing below on the screen, and I'd be glad to cover it. Anyway, I will see you next time on another video where we'll look at yet more fascinating devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jude Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.